Hi, I'm back here again in Google Sheets and in this video I'm going to be taking a closer look at some of the elements that make up the individual client sheets in uh, the Google Sheets CRM system that I'm building here. And uh, we're looking at one of the individual sheets right now. So all of the data that you see here is relevant to this individual client. And the page is divided into three sort of areas. You've got this area in the top left hand corner which is mostly just a form for text to fill out as well as instructions on how to use the form. There are a few buttons here as well which do various things. These are all linked to JavaScript uh, functions uh, and we'll get into that in a moment. At the top on the right hand side we've got a set of data here which is mostly going to be fixed. Uh, it's not going to uh, be something that techs regularly interact with or change. It's really just there for um, to quickly present information about that particular customer in a way that techs can make use of very easily. So things like phone numbers, uh, the names of primary contacts, um, maybe the address of the, the venue, things like that, um, logins, uh, passwords, IP addresses, operating systems, any information that you might want to know about this particular customer, you can put it up in this section. And you can arrange it in whatever format you like. Um, I've color coded a few areas just for different kinds of information. So you've got your important information up the top here, uh, general information here, and then perhaps um, all of your information about the individual people who work at that venue. Uh, one thing that I'd point out here is that at the top here we have a field for support contract and this is controlled by conditional formatting. So we'll take a look at how that works. If I right click on the cell and come down to conditional formatting, there are a couple of rules set up here to format the cell with a particular color depending on whether the date is in the future or in the past. And this is an easy way to quickly visualize whether a particular criteria is met for support for that customer. So if I change the date here to something in the past, let's say the 5th, you can see that the cell color changes and that indicates that the support contract is no longer valid. If I change that to something in the future, you can see that the cell color changes again. And this isn't something that you need to continually update. Google Sheets will handle all of that for you. So if you come to this page at a later date, and that's uh, this date is now in the past, that cell will automatically be formatted into the correct color. Now, because we have a lot of information at the top of this sheet that we want to see all the time, I've got the first 15 rows of data frozen. So they'll follow me wherever I scroll on the page. And we covered how to do that in the previous video. That's in view, freeze, and up to current row. The third important section of the sheet is the call history log, which is everything from 16 down. And this is where all of the call logs will be stored um, when you work on them. Now with the individual customer sheets, you will probably want to protect most of the data that you see here. Uh, certainly you'll want to protect this range here. You can do that by selecting the entirety of the range that you want to protect right click anywhere on it, come down to protect range and you'll want to set your permissions. So you might like to set that to show a warning when editing the range. The only parts of the sheet that you don't want to protect are these forms here where text will be filling in data about the job that they've been carrying out. And you may or may not like to protect this range down here. Um, I've left that unprotected so a customer can come in here and make changes to the, the job entries that they've made um, at a later time when they have more time to work on a, a more detailed explanation. The next thing that we'll take a look at is the buttons on the form here at the top. Each of these links to a different function or a different script 
To find out what script these are currently linked to, I can right click on it and then select from the drop down, assign script. We can see that's assigned to a script called clear range. I'll OK that. And then we'll take a look at what's inside that clear range script. Up here in tools and then in script editor. These are the three scripts that are currently in use on that sheet. So we'll start with clear range. Now coming into this, I didn't actually know anything about um, JavaScript. I didn't know how to write in it or, well, to be honest, I still don't. So um, most of what I've got here are fragments that I've copied from um, some Google result or other. And I've sort of cobbled them all together into something that does the job that I want. I'm sure that to most regular JavaScript programmers, this looks pretty gross. Um, so I do apologize. Um, like I said, I'm not a programmer. Um, I've mostly copied snippets of this from Google and somehow got it to work the way I want it to work. I'm sure it could be done quite a lot better. So if you do have the skills to improve on what I've got here, um, then by all means go right ahead and, and do what you need to do. So function clear range is the function that's being called by that button. It's actually not using that part, so I'll comment that out. So first of all, it's applying a timestamp. That's this guy down here. Basically that picks a cell and dumps a time or, or the current time into it. Here we're getting hold of the sheet that we're working with, which is the current sheet. And then we're inserting a row after a particular row. So insert row after 20. This section here essentially copies a pre-formatted line. Um, if we come back to the sheet, you'll see that some of these cells has, have been merged. And if they were color coded in, in a particular way, that would also be copied. Uh, and that's what's being copied to the cells underneath whereas all of these cells are not yet formatted. So it's creating a duplicate of that line and then inserting it um, after row 20. The next thing it's doing is running log data, which is this guy down here. And there's a little bit there, but it's pretty much all doing the same thing. Actually, this um, section at the bottom is choosing the origin or where the data is coming from. And this part is choosing the destination where the cell or where that data is going to end up. And this part down the bottom here basically copies resolution into the resolution cell. So it's copying that variable into that cell. And the very last thing that clear range is going to be doing is clearing the form itself. So all of the form um, cells that have data or that might have data that was filled in by technicians um, we're basically wiping the contents of that so that it's ready to go again ready to have more data put into it at the bottom of the video in the description I'm going to link to a copy of all of this code so you can take it and make use of it or modify it the way you want it to behave the next part that we'll take a look at is the duration and resolution section um, these are actually all coming from the same script. They're just different functions within that script. So we'll take a look at one of them, right click, and then click on the drop down, assign script. So that's looking at something called time 20. And if I come up to the tools in the script editor, those functions live in this script here, time tech res. And these are basically just a whole lot of very small functions which populate a given cell with a given value. So we'll take a look at the time buttons first. I've actually got more time functions here than I do have buttons on the sheet. So I don't have a button for five minutes, but I do have a function for it. So it's basically just a function called time zero five or time one zero and so on. We're choosing the active sheet as the sheet that we'll be manipulating. And we're creating a variable called time cell 
which is the cell that we'll be populating with data. That's B14. Coming back to the sheet, we've got B14, that's that guy there. And then we're setting the value of that cell to 5. Once you've created one of these functions for time 5 minutes, you can duplicate it and simply change the values. The cell will stay the same, um, just the name of the function and the actual value you'll be setting it to. These ones here are used to denote what kind of resolution we came to. These are pretty much identical to the time functions. Rather than populating that cell with a number, it's just populating it with no, yes, or partial. Obviously, these will have to have individual function names. So I've just called them no resolved, yes resolved, and partial resolved. Now this is a section which I haven't actually implemented, however it would work if I were to implement it. And this is used if you have a set number of technicians, let's say four or five of them. If you had 20, then you probably wouldn't go to the effort of doing something like this. You would just have the tech type in their name in the, in the field here. But if you had only two or three or maybe four, you could set an individual button for each tech to automatically fill their name into that cell so that they don't have to type it in. Again, these are pretty much duplicates of the resolution and time functions. Uh, they just have a set value string of the name of the tech, Amy, Bill, Charlie, Diana. So that covers these buttons down the bottom here. And the very last one we've got here is home, which has a script assigned called go to sheet. And that's this function here. Very, very simple. First of all, it sets a variable called SS, which is just the spreadsheet. And it sets that variable as the active sheet, whatever sheet we're looking at. And the next line basically says, go to a given sheet. And this is going to be the name of the sheet that you want to end up at. Um, and that would have to be um, customized for each individual sheet that you wanted to navigate to using a button in this way. And it's for that reason that I have a button to take me home. But I don't have an individual button for each individual customer because I would have to create an individual function for every single customer and I really don't want to do that. Um, perhaps there is an easier way to do that. Um, I don't know of one so I'm going to stick with what I've got now. And I'll also make all of this code available in the description, so check that out. The very last thing I'll show you is how to actually create the button in the first place. And we'll go ahead and create a button. Up the top menu here, you have a button that says Insert. From there, you can choose Drawing. This will open up a sub-window in Google Sheets where you can create uh, a button. Um, you can use an image as well if you want to. I haven't really played around with that much. Um, I really don't need anything complex, so I'm just using a basic shape called bevel, which has little bevels on it, and it looks kind of like a button. We can put some text on that button, and then save and close. That creates your button here, which you can then resize as you need it. Drag and drop where it needs to go and then link a script to it. So that script will be TSI. So I click on the little dot, 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 assign script, T assign. Okay, and now if I click on that button, it should populate this cell with the name of that tech. Okay, so I think that covers pretty much everything. Um, I hope that's been helpful for you. If you do have any questions or comments, go ahead and let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.